For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lamini. Joining me today is Senior Associate at Allen and Overs Litigation Practice, Rebecca Thompson, to discuss grey listing. Rebecca, can you explain a grey listing of South Africa's financial system in simple terms and also tell us why was our country grey listed and by who? Okay, so the Financial Action Task Force, uh, which is abbreviated to FATF, um, is an intergovernmental organization that was established following a G7 summit in 1989, I think it was, in Paris. And basically what these countries did is they came together and they tried to come up with mechanisms to address risks posed to the global financial system by terrorist financing, money laundering, and proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. And what they did is they came up with some recommendations, which is basically a list of recommended actions that countries, members are expected to implement, which assists not just that country to identify and tackle money laundering and terrorist financing, um, but also in that way protects the global financial system. So that's what FATF does. So following its establishment, they started conducting these um, peer reviews, which is what what's referred to as a, as a mutual evaluation. And it, it, it results in a mutual evaluation report on countries that are assessed for their compliance with these recommendations. South Africa was assessed in 2019, was commencing in 2019. And in October 2021, FATF released its mutual evaluation report on South Africa. And South Africa did very poorly in that report. Um, it basically said we had various legislative issues that needed to be addressed and enforcement issues that needed to be addressed in order to bring us in line with the FATF's recommendations on anti-money laundering. We were then subjected to a period of monitoring, which, which started, which commenced in October 2021 to see that uh, is to see whether or not we could fix the position. Um, and ultimately, whilst a lot was done, we addressed many of the issues. There were what the FATF said were strategic deficiencies that, that we still hadn't addressed or hadn't properly addressed. Um, there were eight of them that were identified, which is why in February 2023, um, the mm -hmm. FATF placed us onto their grey list. Now, basically what the grey list is, is it's a list of countries um, that the FATF identifies as being countries that are um, non-compliant with all of the recommendations, but that are working with the FATF to, um, to address those issues. So they recognize that these countries are, are, are addressing the issues, but they, these countries are subjected to um, heightened monitoring by the FATF, so increased monitoring. And what that is, is it's a signal to the global community that a country on the, on the, on the grey list doesn't have sufficient mechanisms in place to properly address money laundering and to properly address um, terrorist financing. So it's a red flag to the global community when it, when it comes to investing money or transacting with SOEs or with, with private entities within a grey listed country. So what are the implications of uh, the grey listing for ordinary South Africans and what does grey listing mean now for our country's economic prospects? Because of the increased monitoring that's required of South Africa now being on the grey list, what it means in practical terms is when a company in South Africa is transacting with a company or a government anywhere else in the world, or individuals for that matter, anywhere else in the world, the entities in other jurisdictions have to jump through more hoops. They have to um, they have to deal with more compliance hurdles because South Africa is seen as a higher risk jurisdiction compared to jurisdictions that are not on the grey list. So if I use a practical example, if you've got a bank sitting in South Africa dealing with a bank sitting in America, the bank that is the, the American bank that is dealing with a South African bank has to deal with more compliance issues in order to process that transaction. Because of that, the transaction becomes more expensive. So you've got a compliance team sitting in America that has to do more in order just to deal with that transaction with South Africa, right? 
So that transaction becomes more expensive. And that's just one small example. We're dealing with this um, in respect of any transaction across our borders. So that includes imports, exports, banking, um, uh, foreign direct investment, anything you can think of. Because these um, transactions are more expensive, it has a knock-on effect on inflation. It has a knock-on effect on GDP. So in short, um, everything just becomes more expensive. That's the bottom line for um, your ordinary South African. Um, it is it is really a bad signal for the economy. It's, um, you know, the thing that's, um, that's spoken of more regularly, um, just because it happens more regularly, is ratings agency downgrade. Um, what does that mean? It means that transacting in South Africa becomes more expensive. It becomes less um, less attractive to foreign investors or potential investors, and it it ultimately results or may result in in a reduction in GDP. Our president Cyril Ramaphosa recently said that uh, we should see the grey listing as an opportunity uh, to strengthen our country's financial system. I felt like he, he, in a way he was a bit downplaying a, when responding to the news. Do you agree with that? I don't agree with him. Um, I mean, it's an, op- it's an opportunity in as much as seeing load shedding as an opportunity to test your citizens' resilience. Um, there's a difference between opportunity and necessity. Um, and in any event... I disagree with the notion that it's an opportunity to strengthen the country's financial system. The country's financial system is not the problem here. Our banks are doing what they're supposed to do. The problem and the the problems that have been identified as these eight strategic deficiencies that that are still unaddressed, in fact, have to do more with enforcement of the laws that have now been and, and regulations that have been put in place. So where the, where the real issue comes in is with the prosecuting authorities, the police, and the ability for the, the prosecuting authorities to coordinate their efforts with the regulators who are collecting information from the banks to enable them to identify money laundering risks, money laundering patterns, um, and terrorist financing, it all goes hand in hand. And so, no, I don't see it as an opportunity. I see it as a necessity. If we are to progress economically, we simply have to come off the grey list. Other countries like Mauritius, Rebecca, have also been able to restore uh, their ratings quite quickly. How did they go about reversing the grey listing? The government has indicated that they think they can come off the grey list next year. And my understanding of where that thinking comes from is because they're remaining in constant communication with FATF. They think that the FATF will be able to evaluate them in a shorter period of time, notwithstanding the fact that we only expect the next evaluation of official evaluation of South Africa to be somewhere around 2025, 2026. The difficulty with that is that the strategic deficiencies that have been um, identified by FATF in relation to South Africa have a lot to do with South Africa's ability to demonstrate sustained enforcement and sustained compliance with the laws that is now put in place. So we were in a big rush to put certain legislation into place, which happened in December last year. But the FATF says, that's great, you've got legislation there. We want to see your ability to demonstrate that you're actually able to to implement that legislation and that you're not just doing this as a show so that we can see, oh, they've started doing some prosecutions, everything's fine. They want to see that South Africa actually takes this seriously and that they're able to, that the country is able to demonstrate a sustained enforcement of these rules. And that requires time. And so mm-hmm. I, I think that the idea that we could come off next year is, is very hopeful. I, I, I certainly don't have. Um, that much hope. Do you think that if our energy crisis is sorted quickly before the next uh, assessment, our country could be out of grey listing by then? So what the FATF is assessing us on is our um, our ability to tackle money laundering and terrorist financing specifically. Mm. Where government comes in there is not just 
from the enforcement side, which is really important. So obviously um, the National Prosecuting Authority, for example, will be under the spotlight to, sh to see that they, that they understand money laundering, they understand terrorist financing, and that they're actually um, implementing the laws that are there to tackle it. Um, mm. but, the, but the big issue, as I see it, is being able to demonstrate the political will to actually deal with this thing. And that's mm. where, where you've got, you know, looting of state coffers is a national sport here. I see a, di a difficulty with being able to demonstrate that there is political will, that the government is taking it seriously. Um, because how can you, on the one hand, say, yes, there's this ramp rampant rampant corruption there's this rampant looting of SOEs and on the other hand say yes we're taking we're taking um, money laundering and anti-money laundering seriously the two just mm -hmm. don't marry um, and that's where I think that there's there's been an absence of political will there has been a big effort in the last few months to try and address this to try and prevent the grey listing um, I have concerns that now that we're in it, you kind of just get used to everything and carry on a little bit worse off. So who in our country will play uh, the important role in working to reverse uh, the grey listing? There's a number of role players. So government has to be at the head of that. Um, it, FATF is an intergovernmental organisation. And so the, the, um, the relations between South Africa and the FATF are at government level. Um, the key players are the National Prosecuting Authority, our regulators, mm -hmm. the Financial Intelligence Centre. And then I think well, Treasury is a big one. I, I think what we're likely to see is that there's actually going to be a big push from the private sector, so financial institutions in the private sector, to make sure that everybody else is doing what they're doing. I think because it obviously has a significant impact not only on average South Africans, but, but in particular on the financial sector. And because of that, I think that we're likely to see um, the private sector really stepping up, mm -hmm. basically to make sure that the relevant state entities are doing what they're supposed to do. Is your sector affected at all by the grey listing, Rebecca? The legal sector, I work in litigation. We haven't seen any immediate effects, but when the economy takes a knock, mm -hmm. um, companies stop paying their debts. So, I, you know, I think there's probably, there's likely to be an effect on insolvency, increased insolvencies in the country. There'll be a lot of regulatory advice to be given. So we expect to be approached by a number of, of institutional clients to to for advice on how to navigate um, the grey listing, what that means, what that means um, in terms of the actual practical effect on, um, on cross-border transacting. But we, we wait to see what's going to happen in the coming months. There are senior associates at Allen and Overs litigation practice, Rebecca Thompson, to discuss grey listing.